Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. We have x squared plus x equals y squared, and x and y are integers. So this is called the Diophantine equation. We're not looking for real solutions, because obviously there would be infinitely many real solutions to this equation. We only have a single equation, but two variables. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'll be presenting three different approaches, and let's start with the first one. Before we kind of start talking about the first method, I want you to notice something. If you go ahead and set the y equal to 0, then you basically get x squared plus x equals 0. This is just a particular solution. And then from here we get x times x plus 1 equals 0. And this gives us x equals 0 or x equals negative 1. This means that there are two x values for single y value. And this basically gives us two ordered pair as solutions. So we have 0 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at it from another perspective. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to parameterize this thing. I can go ahead and actually factor x times x plus 1 as I did here before I substitute anything. So let's go ahead and start with this again, x squared plus x equals y squared. And then I'm going to factor out the x. Now, in order for this to pro this product to be a perfect square, because y squared is a perfect square, right? x plus 1 needs to be a perfect square times x. Why does it have to have x? Because we only have a single x, and we need to multiply it by another x to make it x squared. And then anything else that's a perfect square will work. But we do need at least one x. So x plus 1 can basically be written as x times t squared, where t is an integer, okay? So that gives us something real cool. By setting x plus 1 equal to xt squared, we're able to solve for x. Let's go ahead and do it. x plus 1 equals xt squared. Let's subtract x from both sides. xt squared minus x equals 1. Factor out x, you get t squared minus 1 equals 1. Don't forget, t is an integer. We can divide both sides by t squared minus 1 as long as t does not equal 1 or negative 1. Obviously, that's not going to work because, as you can see here, if t is 1 or negative 1, we get x times 0 equals 1, which is impossible, right? That equation has no solutions. So, under those conditions, t does not equal plus minus 1. We can go ahead and divide, and we get the x value as a parameter, or in terms of another variable, which we call a parameter. And then y is just what? How do you find y from here, right? Well, y squared is equal to x times xt squared. So let's go ahead and work that out here. y squared is equal to x times xt squared. But x times xt squared is just x squared t squared. Great. From here, we get two solutions. y is either tx or y is negative tx. Awesome. We're going to check both. But we do have a value for x in terms of t. So if x is equal to this, then if y is equal to tx, then it's just going to be t over t squared minus 1. And in the other case scenario, y is just going to be negative t over t squared minus 1. Again, these uh, give us the solutions. But which t value is going to work? Remember, we had set y equal to 0. Now, if you look at this equation very carefully, 1 over t squared minus 1 can only be an integer because x is an integer, remember? x is an integer. In order for this to be an integer, t squared minus 1 needs to be an integer. But t also needs to be an integer because y is equal to t times x, right? Well, actually, x uh, y equals not t times x, but uh, let me see what we found. y equals tx or negative tx, exactly. So if t, I was thinking about t can t be square root of 2 because t squared minus 1 is going to be an integer but that's not going to work because then y will not be an integer so we do need t to be an integer as well and the only integer for which 1 over t squared minus 1 is an integer is t equals 0 so for t equals 0 we get the same values as before okay so that's pretty much the first method and now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And then you're going to let me know which method you like the best. Now for my second method, I have x squared plus x equals y squared. I'm going to use a really cool manipulation. 
and that is multiplying both sides by 4. So here's a general strategy. If you do see x squared plus x and you're solving it out of the equation, definitely 99.9% .9 of the time multiply both sides by 4 because that's going to help you only. So if you multiply both sides by 4, we get the following. 4x squared plus 4x is equal to 4y squared. And then how do you proceed? We want to turn the left-hand side to a perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead and add 1 to both sides. And that's going to give me 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 4y squared plus 1. And now the left-hand side can be written as a perfect square, 2x plus 1 squared. And 4y squared can also be written as a perfect square because it is 2y quantity squared plus 1 completes the process. Now, if you look at this very carefully, if you've done a little bit of algebra before, hopefully you're going to be able to notice how much algebra is used for number theory because this problem actually belongs to the number theory domain. Anyways, hopefully you see the difference of two squares. Let's subtract the 2y squared from both sides and then we'll be able to factor this, which is nice. Uh, a squared minus b squared can be factored as a plus b times a minus b. This is one of the most important, I think, famous formulas in math. I would say Pythagorean theorem, this one. A couple other ones are super duper important. And this is just one of them. Now, this expression can be factored into 2x plus 1 plus 2y and 2x plus 1 minus 2y from difference of two squares, and that's equal to 1. Let's go ahead and arrange these terms a little bit. Write it as 2x plus 2y plus 1, kind of like in standard form and then 2x minus 2y plus 1, and the product is equal to 1. Now, it's very good to get 1 actually here because 1 can only be factored in two ways. 1 times 1 and negative 1 times negative 1. So let's go ahead and look at each case, case by case. We're going to solve this, right? So the first case is going to be 2x plus 2y plus 1 is equal to 1, and 2x minus 2y plus 1 is equal to 1. Now, what does that give me? Actually, if you add these equations up, 2y is going to cancel out. You're going to get 4x equals 0, which means x equals 0. And then from if you plug in 0, you're going to get y equals 0. So you're going to get 0, comma 0. We call this sifr as sifr, el davar sifr. Okay, hopefully you can find out what that means. And then the other scenario is 2x plus 2y plus 1 is equal to negative 1. And the other equation also equals negative 1. And then from here, we get pretty much something similar, but this time y is going to be 0, but x is not going to be 0. We're going to get negative 1, 0 as before. So, so far we found two solutions to this Diophantine equation in the integer world, and those are 0, 0 and negative 1, 0. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at, at the third method, which I think is very interesting, and this is probably one of the most common methods for these kinds of problems, but you never know. It kind of depends on the problem. And here's the third one. So we're going to go ahead and uh, write this our, our equation and subtract y squared from both sides, and we're going to turn this into a quadratic in x. It is quadratic in x, right, because we have x squared and x. So we can use the quadratic formula, and it's just awesome. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is going to be plus 4y squared. And in order for x to be an integer, we first have to get an integer outside the radical. So the expression inside the radical needs to be a perfect square, and that's just perfect. So let's go ahead and set the discriminant equal to z squared, because if that's the case, then we might get an integer. It's not guaranteed, but we still need to check. And from here, guess what? We find difference of two squares again. But this is a lot simpler than the other method, because this is very easy to factor. z plus 2y, z minus 2y equals 1 again. We get the same scenarios if z plus 2y is equal to 1 and z minus 2y is equal to 1. From here, you get 2z equals 2, which is z equals 1, and y equals 0. All right? z is just a dummy variable. We don't care about it, so it's not important, but y equals 0 will obviously give you the x value if you just plug it in, right? If you plug in y equals 0, you're going to get negative 1 plus minus 1 divided by 2, and again, that's going to give you the negative 1 and 0. So there's going to be two x values, uh, negative 1 or 0. And if uh, with the other scenario, which is z plus 2y equals negative 1 and z minus 2y equals negative 1, this, this one is kind of interesting. 2y is going to cancel out. 2z equals negative 2 is going to give you z equals negative 1. And if you plug in z equals negative 1, um, you can basically, 
well, find the y value from the, one of these equations, like if in the first equation uh, you're going to get y equals 0 again, so it's just going to repeat the same thing. In other words, there are only two solutions, and those are going to be negative 1, 0 and 0, 0 to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.